Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking you through our 2025 predicted topics for AQA GCSE Biology Paper 1. We've put in hours of research analysing exam trends, past papers and examiner reports to make these the most accurate, high quality predicted papers for GCSE Biology. The bonus of choosing our papers are that you'll get realistic exam style questions to test your knowledge, which are designed to match the real thing so you know exactly what to expect and they are created by experts to give you the best preparation possible. You can check out our reviews over on our shop following the link below to see our past success stories. Now feel free to skip to the relevant section that you need using the timestamps. We've got higher separate, higher combined, foundation separate and foundation combined as well and then some general tips for all of you at the end, so don't forget to check those out too. As a final reminder, please do note that these are only our predictions. We are only human and analyzed based on previous trends and patterns. These should act as a guide for your revision. We don't have any inside information. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's first start with AQA higher separate. Here are the topics we think you should look into. Now, first, we've got cell structure and specialized cells. Key concepts we think you should look into are the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, the structure and function of key organelles, including nucleus, mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. Examples of specialized cells and how their adaptations help them function. So, for example, nerve cells, root hair cells and sperm cells. And next we have organization. So key concepts here include the levels of organization in organisms cells and tissues and organs and organ systems, the structure and function of major organ systems, so for example the digestive system, the circulatory system, the role of enzymes in digestion and factors affecting enzyme activity, pH and temperature for example, then we have diffusions and active transport. So looking at the difference between diffusion, osmosis and active transport, how active transport allows substances to move against a concentration gradient, how molecules move by diffusion, examples of diffusions and active transport in plants, so root hair cells, and then animals, so glucose absorption in the small intestine. Brush up on the microscopy required practical, so looking at how to prepare a slide of onions or cheek cells, how to use a light microscope to view cells at different magnifications, and then how to calculate magnification using the formula. And then brush up on the photosynthesis required practical too. So key concepts being the photosynthesis equation and how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis, how to set up the pondweed experiment to measure oxygen production, the effects of different factors, so light, CO2, temperature on photosynthesis rates as well. Then you'll want to look at the circulatory system and exercise. You'll want to look at the structure and the function of the heart, blood vessels and blood components, the role of arteries, veins and capillaries, how exercise affects heart rate and blood flow, anaerobic respiration. And then next we have communicable diseases, including plant diseases and malaria. Look into the difference between bacterial, viral, fungal and protist diseases, how pathogens spread and how the body defends itself, and then examples of plant diseases including fungal infections. The life cycle and transmission of malaria is something you'll want to look at too. And then you've got monoclonal antibodies. So key things to know here are what monoclonal antibodies are and how they are produced how they are used in pregnancy tests, cancer treatment and medical diagnosis. And then of course, there's non-communicable disease and lifestyle too. So looking at cancer, you need to know the difference between benign and malignant tumours, how lifestyle factors like smoking, diet and radiation exposure contribute to cancer risk, and then the role of genetics and environmental factors in cancer development. So those are our AQA separate topics. Don't forget to skip forward to the end for some exam tips to help you secure the best grade you can get. Good luck. Next up, we have AQA GCSE combined science paper one. And remember, this is still higher too. We think you should look into first cell structure and specialized cells. Key concepts we think you should look into are the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, the structure and function of key organelles, including nucleus, mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. Examples of specialised cells as well and how their adaptations help them function. So, for example, nerve cells, root hair cells, sperm cells. And then secondly, we have enzymes. So key concepts here are the lock and key theory explaining enzyme action, how temperature and pH affect enzyme activity and the role of enzymes in digestion. Next up, we've got organisation. 
And here you should look into the levels of organisation in organisms, so cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and the structure and function of major organ systems, so digestive system, circulatory system, etc. Four is diffusion and active transport. Here, look at the difference between diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. How active transport allows substances to move against a concentration gradient. Examples of diffusion and active transport. So for example, in plants, you've got root hair cells and then animals, glucose absorption in the small intestine. And next we have electron microscopes with key concepts, including the differences between light and electron microscopes and why electron microscopes provide higher magnification and resolution. For your required practical microscopy, look at key concepts such as how to prepare a slide of onion or cheek cells, how to use a light microscope to view cells at different magnifications, how to calculate magnification using the formula. Then you'll want to look at uses of glucose in plants, specifically look at the products of photosynthesis and how plants use glucose, and glucose is converted into starch, cellulose, proteins, fats, and used in respiration too. Another required practical to brush up on is photosynthesis. Get to know the photosynthesis equation and limiting factors, so light intensity, CO2, temperature, and how to set up and interpret the pondweed experiment. Explore the circulatory system and effects of exercise. Look at things like the structure and function of the heart, blood vessels and blood components, the role of arteries, veins and capillaries, how exercise affects heart rate and blood flow, and anaerobic respiration. Then look at surface area to volume ratio, specifically why smaller organisms have a higher smaller area to volume ratio and why larger organisms need specialised exchange surfaces. Look at communicable diseases, including plant diseases and malaria, with content like the difference between bacterial, viral, fungal and protist diseases, how pathogens spread and how the body defends itself. Examples of plant diseases, including fungal infections, the life cycle and transmission of malaria, and last but not least, look at non-communicable diseases too, cancer and lifestyle risk factors, with key concepts being the difference between benign and malignant tumours, and how lifestyle factors like smoking, diet and radiation exposure contribute to cancer risk. Okay, so best of luck with paper one. Don't forget to skip forward to that end, where you can learn about some crucial exam and revision tips before your exam. Okay, next up we have separate foundation. These are the topics we've predicted for a more detailed breakdown of questions and for the best possible practice, don't forget to check out our predicted papers. So first up, we have cell structure and specialised cells. Key ideas to look at are the differences between plant, animal and bacterial cells, the function of different cell parts, nucleus, mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. Examples of specialised cells and their annotations, for example, nerve cells, sperm cells, root hair cells. And then secondly, enzymes. So key ideas for you to get yourself clued up on here are enzymes help speed up reactions in the body. The lock and key model, how enzymes only work with specific molecules. Factors that affect enzyme activity, temperature and pH. And then there's organisation. So look at the levels of organisation, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, the function of major organ systems, digestive and circulatory, the role of enzymes in breaking down food. And next we have diffusion and active transport, looking at the difference between diffusion, osmosis and active transport. And active transport moves substances against a concentration gradient using energy. You'll also want to look at electron microscopes, brush upon the difference between light microscopes and electron microscopes, and why electron microscopes provide higher magnification and resolution. Next, the microscopy required practical. Here, you'll need to know how to use a microscope to look at cells and how to calculate magnification. Seven, the uses of glucose in plants. Plants use glucose from photosynthesis for respiration to release energy, making cellulose for strong cell walls, making starch to store energy, so make sure to familiarise yourself with this. And then next, another required practical to brush up on, photosynthesis. Key ideas include how to test the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis and how plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis. We've also got the circulatory system and effects of exercise where you should look at the heart, blood vessels and blood components the role of arteries, veins and capillaries, how exercise affects heart rate and blood flow, and anaerobic respiration. Look at surface area to volume ratio too. 
don't forget that small organisms have a higher surface area to volume ratio and large animals need specialised exchange surfaces to get enough oxygen and nutrients. Brush up on drug development too. Get to know how new drugs are tested for safety and effectiveness and the stages of testing, lab testing, animal testing and human trials. Two more, I promise. Look at communicable diseases, including plant diseases and uh, malaria. Key concepts include the difference between bacterial, viral, fungal and protist diseases, how pathogens spread and how the body defends itself. Examples of plant diseases, including fungal infections too, and the life cycle and transmission of malaria. Now, finally, non-communicable diseases, cancer and lifestyle risk, uh, risk factors. Look at the difference between benign and malignant tumours and how lifestyle factors like smoking, diet and radiation increase cancer risk. We really hope those predictions helped guide your revision. Don't forget to check out our masterclass over on the Academy for further support. Now, our final set of predictions here are combined foundation ones for paper one only, of course. Grab yourself a pen and note these down. First up, we have cell structure and specialised cells. Brush up on the differences between plant, animal and bacterial cells. The function of cell parts, so nucleus, mitochondria, cell membrane, etc. And how specialised cells are adapted for their jobs. So, for example, sperm cells, nerve cells and root hair cells. Next, we have enzymes. Importantly, enzymes help speed up reactions in the body. Look at the lock and key model too. Enzymes only fit specific molecules. And look at factors that affect enzymes. So, for example, temperature and pH. We've then got organisation. Brush up on the levels of organisation, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems. The function of major organ systems, digestive, circulatory. And the role of enzymes in digestion. Revise diffusion and active transport. This includes the difference between diffusion, osmosis and active transport. Active transport moves substances against a concentration gradient using energy. Examples, root hair cells in plants and glucose absorption in the intestines. Look at electron microscopes, specifically the difference between light microscopes and electron microscopes, and why electron microscopes show more detail than light microscopes. For a required practical, look at microscopy, specifically how to use a microscope to look at cells and how to calculate magnification. We then have the use of glucose in plants. Key things to remember are plants use glucose from photosynthesis for respiration to release energy, making cellulose for strong cell walls and for making starch to store energy. So just make sure you're all good with that. That leads us on to another required practical, photosynthesis. Make sure you know how to test the effect of light intensity on photosynthesis and how plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis as well. We have the circulatory system and effects of exercise, brush up on the heart, blood vessels and blood uh, components, the role of arteries, veins and capillaries, how exercise affects heart rate and blood flow, and anaerobic respiration. Nearly there, but we've also got surface area to volume ratio. So key ideas here are that small organisms have a higher surface area to volume ratio and large animals need specialised exchange surfaces to get enough oxygen and nutrients. Next, communicable diseases, including plant diseases. Look at the difference between bacterial, viral, fungal and protist diseases, how pathogens spread and how the body defends itself, and examples of plant diseases, including fungal infections and how they can affect the plant. Now, last but not least, we have non-communicable diseases, cancer and lifestyle risk factors here. Get to know the difference between benign and malignant tumours and how lifestyle factors like smoking, diet and radiation increase cancer risk. OK, so those are our AQA Biology Paper 1 predictions. Here are some quick tips to help you secure the best grade possible for biology, no matter what your target grade is. Now, obviously, there's no single best way to revise. Different techniques work for different people, but here are some tried and tested revision methods. So first, try active recall. Don't just read. The best revision happens when you test yourself rather than just reading notes mindlessly. So that includes things like cover, write, check, read a section, cover it up, write down what you remember, then check using our free flashcards, using past papers to test your knowledge under exam conditions. And a personal favourite of mine is to teach someone else. If you can explain a topic clearly, you know it well. 
Number two is use mind maps. So mind maps help link ideas together, especially for big topics like the circulatory system or respiration. Try starting with the main topic in the center and drawing branches for key points. You can also make it more visual by adding diagrams and colors to make it easier to remember. And then combining tip one and two here is practice drawing things from memory. This really helps with recall. Next up, watch revision videos. If you're a visual learner, watching videos can make tricky concepts much easier. We have free biology videos that walk you through biology topics in a really relaxed and easy to understand way. You can also practice exam questions. Doing past paper questions helps you get used to the questions, and how they're worded, spot patterns in what examiners like to ask and crucially improve your timing so you don't rush in the real exam. Now, finally, attend the masterclass the night before. The night before your exam, we'll be running a live masterclass covering key topics and comment exam questions, last minute revision tips and how to avoid silly mistakes. It's a great way to boost your confidence and to calm your nerves before the big day. Join us live. We'd love to see you there, of course. Now you can sign up for that masterclass on a three month basis or even monthly. So you're only paying for what you'll use at this point this close to the exam. So overall, our final tips for GCSE Biology Paper 1 for all of you. Start revising early. Don't leave it until the last minute. Mix up your revision methods. Try flashcards, past papers and videos. Take breaks. Your brain needs time to process information. Get a good night's sleep the day before your exam. Being well rested means that you can really kind of process rather than that last minute cramming. Most importantly, stay calm and believe in yourself. You've got this. Good luck with your biology paper one, you'll smash it.